Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. We have some special guests here. We have Stan Slay, the product manager at Sangoma, and we have Tom Ray, who is the North American distribution manager. And we are here to present Sangoma's new next generation P series desk phones to you. Um, so I'm going to hand this right over to Stan and he will take over from here. We do have the ability to do some Q&A um, throughout the webinar. And if you look down at your screen at the bottom right hand side, you'll see a little Q icon there. That is where you can ask questions throughout the webinar. We will monitor that and then we will get to the questions at the end of the webinar. There's also the chat function. So if there is something that comes to mind and you don't and you want everybody to see it, you can actually use that, that chat function. Uh, but the Q&A that, that'll be uh, between you and us and we can read through those um, towards the end of the webinar. So with that, I will, uh, I will pass this over to Stan. Okay, thank you very much, Mary. Uh, I would like to say thank you very much for inviting me to this presentation. I love to go out and talk about our new products, our new series of desk phones that uh, we have released and very excited about them. And Tom, I also appreciate you joining from the uh, Sangoma sales side of the house. Um, so if there are any questions <clears throat> that come up that are that I think Mary or in your ballpark or Tom, I'm going to turn them over. I have no problem doing that. So I do appreciate um, uh, joining today. And again, as Mary said, I am the product manager for all of the Sangoma uh, desktop phones. Uh, I also am the product manager for our headsets uh, in our company. And I'll probably throw out a couple of blips about the headsets as I go through. Okay, so what I'm gonna cover today is uh, a few topics. Uh, I'm gonna cover just a little bit about the company, the Sangoma Company overview, so that for any of those that may not be aware of where we are today, uh, I won't go in real depth. Uh, and you know, if you get any deep questions in from a organization, I'll be glad to try to help you, or maybe even Tom could help out. Um, then I'm gonna go into <clears throat> a high level uh, model information of all of our Sangoma phones, including some of our existing phones that we're selling today. I'm going to talk about a, a few unique uh, selling propositions, uh, it really uh, information that could be helpful. I also will cover uh, comparative positioning. I'll talk a little bit about the launch of the new phones, and then I'm going to add some stuff with logistics and ordering, accessories, uh, and then a few other tidbits on the phone series. And at the end, I'll talk a little bit about where we stand with all of our phones and might be an area where both Mary and uh, Tom could uh, help out a little bit. So from a corporate point of view, uh, Sangome was, has one of the most complete portfolios of as a service uh, type products of, of probably anybody in the industry. And what I did, I put a dotted line circle or oval around the far uh, right three boxes. Uh, this is something I wanted to mention. Uh, it really is identifying the new company that was just purchased and brought into the Sangoma family, Net Fortress. Some of you may or may not have heard of them. These are the services that they additionally bring to the table, which makes one of the broadest lineup of, of products and services of any company in this industry. Uh, they have a security as a service and SD-WAN as a service and then network access uh, and connectivity services. And so, again, I'm not going with a lot of this, but all most of this is based off of SwitchFox. I don't know if any of you have heard of Business Voice. We call it BV, which is a previous company that uh, we had purchased Star to Star. And BV is essentially uh, the, the enterprise level type of uh, provisioning software, whereas SwitchFox is our middle range um, provisioning software and one of the traditional softwares uh, with uh, Sangoma. So without going into detail on all these issues, uh, down in the bottom right, you'll see we have endpoints and that's really what we are here for. So before we go there, a couple of points to know who is Sangoma? You know, we're a leader in the business to business uh, communications and, and communications as a service, as I just mentioned. To the right is really the same 
uh, set of uh, a same slide as that on the first slide. We provide this for all sizes of business. We offer the industry's most complete portfolio and we're equally committed to both prem, on-prem and cloud services and products. Essentially, we make it all. It's one company to work with, which is a very good thing. Uh, this particular slide, and again, the, the uh, bringing that fortress into our world is very new. Um, <clears throat> there may even be some people inside our company not completely aware of it or who they, what they do. So this is not updated to show the additional net fortress, uh, net fortress product. But from this, uh, and this is really only just uh, a few weeks old, uh, but from this slide, you can tell that Sangoma fills all the green checks uh, with all of these services whereas a lot of other companies uh, do not today. This is a real busy slide, so I'll just touch on a few things. This one, I did go through an update. Um, you notice now that a real quick snapshot today, uh, we are about 750 or so uh, staff with our company um, uh, worldwide. And um, off to the right, you notice uh, some of our financials. The most important financial to notice is the one on the far right where it says recurring revenue. 75% uh, in this industry is a very high recurring revenue. And that's a very good thing with any company. You notice over to the bottom left, I am circling the, the logo and the new company, Net Fortress. And you notice right up under is Star to Star, which is the, the other company that was purchased last year. And they, <clears throat> they added to really the, the business voice product. And then you notice also that uh, we have uh, over 100,000 customers globally, and um, probably over 2.6 million communication seats worldwide also. This is an interesting slide. It's not specific to a particular um, service, but it gives you some interesting ideas of where all of us are in the communications world in trends. Um, so through this in to get a good idea. So as far as as far as migration to the cloud, where are we? Now this information is just a little old. It says this was late 2020, so it's about a year old. So we know that the cloud is a little larger than this, probably closer to 55 to higher 50s percent, and then rest of it's on premise. So with this being said, everything continues to move toward the cloud and on premise is still a strong contender uh, in this particular market. From a remote working mobility, just a statistic here, it shows that by 2022, which we are now into, and it's really pushing it to toward the mid to end of 2022, 42% of workers will be mobile. We probably already know that. Uh, we have the same situation in our company and, and just about everybody I talk to, it's the same. From a unified communications perspective, um, it seems like uh, systems continue to increase uh, workflow productivity uh, by 52% and efficiently by 45%. So that's a, a good story for uh, the unified uh, communications. From a value-based communication systems, 78% of businesses operate on open source. That's a very important statistic, particularly being the fact that Sangoma is um, very big into open source products, uh, both from the the asterisk and free PBX and PB exact. Anyhow, some interesting tidbits. Thought you guys would be interested. By the way, I, I'd like to ask, I should have asked at the very beginning, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Martha, Tom, I assume you can, uh, uh, Mary, Tom, I assume you guys can hear me? You sound fabulous. No okay. worries, you're good. Good, I, I should have asked at the very beginning. Okay, so just another chart here. <clears throat> so it says, uh, you should feel comfortable doing business with us, and here's why. Um, now, this chart is not updated. Again, I'm leaving that to the top execs to provide that information, but these bullets are what's important. You know, Sangome is a rapidly growing, profitable public company. Uh, we're award-winning, uh, we have product suites covering the board, and with an install base, actually it's 2.6 million, as you saw in a previous slide. But the key is we continue to be a large and growing company. And uh, we are now out on the stock market, have been out there for, I don't know, about a half a year. And the, the real point is it will be there for the long term for you as a customer. 
this is a real busy one, just shows a lot of the larger companies throughout the world that we're involved with. I'm sure some of these you would recognize no matter what part you're in, but you know, like Domino's and BT and Verizon and um, Kroger. Um, Ericsson is a very large communications company themselves, but quite a few. So why should customers choose Sangoma? We provide a full spectrum of cloud communications, not just another UCAS as company. As you saw from the list, we cover the full spectrum and actually cover more than some others do. Uh, we provide a complete UC solution from all from one vendor. That's very important to be able to shop, uh, deal, and work with one company instead of working with multiple companies. And oh, by the way, the angle I come from, obviously, and provide you the phones for all of those services. Um, we provide both uh, on-premise cloud hybrid uh, deployment options um, throughout the company and, and all the services. And we're a leading value-based communication solution, uh, both from price and quality, features, service, uh, all the way up to the enterprise level. I mentioned earlier the business voice product, uh, and we provide excellent uh, global support teams. Essentially, we're, we're a stable company, we're growing, we're very profitable, and we're gonna be here for the long term. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get into something that uh, you're really here for. You wanna hear more about phones. Actually, I wanna talk more about phones. So let's uh, back up a little bit and do a little refresher. I'm sure a lot of you will know this and know these phones, but just in case, I'll bring up speed a little bit. Uh, off to the left, you know, and, and today, we actually are providing three different families of phones. Um, according to this page, it shows three, but um, in reality, we're still three because now the A series, as you notice this note, the A series is EOL uh, as of the first of the year. There's still a lot of customers got them and, and they were good phones, but uh, it's time to move on to bigger and better technology. The other existing phones is a S series, which are primarily designed for a free PBX, PB exact open source type product. And then you have the, the uh, even more popular D series phones. And by the way, I hope you guys can see my cursor circling around certain areas, that, that helps a little bit. Um, the D series is, <clears throat> include SwitchFox as one of our um, provisioning systems. So let's dig a little deeper into this. Uh, again, we have the A series, the S series and D series. Now we're moving into the world of a new uh, introduction and I'll get there in just the next slide is the P series. And the P series essentially is the next generation, the third generation of phones by uh, you know, the old company Digium in, in Sangoma. Uh, and we have now taken the P phones and merged all of the features and functionalities of the three families you see in front of you into one product. That makes it a lot easier from uh, different angles and I'll, I got another slide for that. But the key to the new P phones is that our P phones will actually work with all of Sangoma's provisioning systems, Asterix, Free PBX, PBXX, SwitchFox, and then the Business Voice, which I mentioned earlier. And you'll probably hear me touch on that a few times uh, as we continue forward. What does this do for you as a, either a partner or a reseller or a customer? And really what does it do for us as Sangoma too? Um, so some customer benefits. First of all, you have one line of Sangoma phones that you have to deal with. Uh, and that also limits the, the configuration and setup of those phones to your PBX systems. So there's no swapping out and having to worry about different vendors. Now, I know a lot of people do have that, but as you get into P phones, you don't have to do that. Um, both partners and support people can worry about one Sangoma phone line instead of three as we continue forward. Now we will continue to support all of our phones really for quite a few years. And I've, I'll show you points on that as we get into it. But from a point of uh, stocking the products and selling the products and, and supporting the products it, it, down the road, it makes it much easier. A lower cost for entry for price sensitive opportunities. And believe me, that has been a huge help for us. Uh, everybody's probably heard about uh, various other companies, uh, not just Sangoma, but uh, companies in, in the whole world that are in you know, electronics and, and products like this that are struggling to get parts, build product and ship product. Um, when you have one major product line that you're moving forward with, it makes that much better. Um, the other thing is that now uh, the Sangoma phones will 
you have to worry about one phone on how it works and sets up instead of three different ones. Yeah, they, they set up and work very close, but there were still a few little differences between each line. Now, another good thing is that the new P phones pretty much follow in line or follow the footsteps of the D phones from a, a design and functionality uh, more so than they do anything else, even though they still take on all the features and functionalities of the other phones too. But from a development perspective, uh, it makes it easier to move forward with that. Uh, now, so how does this benefit uh, Sangoma? And in reality, uh, customers too, that's the reason I put and customer, is that <clears throat> it enables our engineers to focus on customer and platform specific capabilities faster. That makes a huge difference. I, I'm already seeing a, a difference in that because we're at the point now where we're supporting all of our phones, but they're not having to build new features and functionalities for three different product lines, there's only one. Uh, efficient uh, testing across one product versus uh, at one time here shortly, it was four product lines. That makes a much bigger difference. Uh, and then from an operational forecasting logistics, uh, it makes it much more efficient and cost savings. And you'll see as I get into the products, you'll see where our pricing is very competitive. And part of the reason we're able to do that is for all the reasons I just mentioned. Here's the new P-Series models. Uh, we have like three segments. Uh, as you'll notice down at the bottom, we have the value phones. Now I always show one, this is the 310 or 315 from the front, you can't tell the difference but it is a difference, um, but they look the same on the front. That's where you only have the one. So we have the value phones, then we have our main or mid uh, level phones, uh, which is the 320, 325, 330. These are the phones that will be new to you and the executive phone, which is the touchscreen phone. And we also have a newer um, extension we call it the PM200, we call it the attendant console, but it's the um, expansion module for it, additional keys to plug in. And that will actually plug into a 330, which you see here. It's a little hard to see the image there, but there's, there's uh, 12 keys and it plugs inside of that one, or it also plugs into the side of the 370. And if you guys know anything about our existing D phones, the, the existing uh, expansion module we have only connects to the D65, uh, whereas this one will connect to both of these phones. So let's look a little bit more. I'm, I'm just going to make an assumption that we've had maybe a few new people uh, in the audience. There's probably a lot that are not, but this is the, the value-based <clears throat> uh, entry-level 310, P310 and 315 phones. These were actually released mid-2021, so they've been out there for a little bit. Uh, and of course, they were uh, in, entered into the market because we saw a big need of having a, an entry level, uh, lower priced, not as many features type phone, something that you could hang in a hallway in a large manufacturing plant, maybe a break room, and all you need is an extra button to just go to the office, for example. Uh, so you don't need a tremendous amount of features. And, um, and so this phone uh, was designed for that purpose. Uh, the screen is not quite as large as the other phones, but it's a, a very high crisp phone. Uh, they changed the fonts and they did a lot of work on making sure we had the right font. So even though it's a smaller display, it's still very clear and very crisp and it's color. Uh, a couple of things too is that, uh, of course, this phone has two SIP lines and, you know, by the way, I say 310, 315, the difference between the 310 and 315 is this, if you can see my mouse circling, uh, is the 315 has gigabit ethernet speed. And so with the 310 having fast ethernet, which still in a phone world for the majority of everything you do, it's, it's plenty speed, uh, you get a discount uh, for that particular phone. But you, you also have um, two Kensington lock ports on the back. And I'll show an image of that and discuss it just a little bit more. But I would like to make a note that when we were designing this phone, we were looking at all the other existing phones we have and trying to get the best of both worlds on everything, both uh, features, functionality, the, the, the design of the phone, the materials we used in it, uh, et cetera. And I've had a lot of um, customers uh, and resellers to tell me that 
when you pick up one of these phones, you're expecting, quote, a cheap phone. Well, it's not. It, it has, you know, heavy base, heavy uh, uh, headset, um, and, and it has a feel. And I have a lot of people tell me it feels like a more expensive phone. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So these are the new guys that we just released um, in early April, around April 11th. This is the what we call the mid-range, but it's the lower of the mid-range. And you notice it has four SIP accounts or four keys on the left. Uh, and by the way, this is a boot up screen, kind of neat screen there. Uh, all of these new phones have a, a 4.3 inch backlit color display. And it has <clears throat> what they call IPS glass. Now, some people go, oh, well, what's that? And, and everybody that way, no, not really. And I got some charts that shows competitive charts that there are a few that's got IPS glass. And what that stands for is in-plane switching. Now, that don't really tell you much, but what it really means is it gives you the ability to view the image, the screen, from any angle. Uh, a lot more so than we, you would have on a normal phone. You know, if you go about 45 or so, you start losing the ability to see what really is on the image. This is, I call it viewing from any angle. It's a big plus, along with the high quality color screen. So, <clears throat> We have um, some of the standard things like the six dedicated phone function keys on the left. Um, you have USB ports. Now we're getting in USB ports on our phone and I'll make a note here, the USB port for headsets or future expansion. expansion. And I mentioned earlier that um, uh, I actually uh, am product manager for headsets. In fact, I'm talking on uh, one of our, uh, the, the high end, the mid range headset. Uh, it's called an HC120. The, uh, the entry level HC100 where it, it has a speaker for one ear. They now will plug directly into these phones. Now you can plug into your PC just like I am right now, or you can plug into your phone. Uh, and that's a big plus. They, they have very good quality. I've, I've heard a lot of people uh, tell me how well they liked this new USB uh, headsets. Anyhow, uh, of course we have the standard uh, from really from the 315 phone all, all the way up. They are all gigabit ethernet. Uh, we still have the popular EHS port on the back where you can also plug in a headset uh, and it's it, for other support uses. Uh, and you have backlink audio function keys and this phone also has the two lock ports as mentioned. And so I'm not gonna repeat a lot of this going through because all of them have it. But the key here is four SIP accounts or four lines, 4.3 inch color IPS glass, and USB ports. Again, this is the P320. Okay, so now this is the, sometimes I call it the mid of the mid range, P325 phones. Uh, and you notice that it has all the same features and functionalities as the 320, as I mentioned, with an addition of, now it has six counts or six lines. So this phone is very comparable to a D65, if you're familiar with that. Uh, our, one of our current phones, it has six buttons also. And this one has pagination keys so that you can page through uh, six, you know, you have six buttons and you can page through to another, you know, six buttons and page through to another six buttons. Essentially you can go up to 10 pages and we call that virtual BLF keys. Uh, we also have um, all the other features and functionalities as mentioned before. This is the upper end of our three uh, mid-range. This is the 330. And if you really want to look at it, if you're familiar with our D65, which has the six keys, and it's, it's kind of our flagship phone. Um, I would say it's probably the, the sweet spot uh, between that and the D62 um, in current sales today and current capability. It's kind of, the D65 is kind of in between the 325 and the 330. Um, and, but when you, when you look at pricing, you'll see where the 330 is even a bigger contender here. Uh, but this phone now, not only is it in the same level as 65, but actually it edges into the executive level range of phone. And the reason being is that we have 12 SIP accounts or 12 lines. You have six keys on each side. I briefly mentioned earlier, but now we also have built-in Bluetooth and built-in Wi-Fi. Uh, I've had a lot of people, a lot of sales, um, and Tom, I think you and I've actually talked about this a couple of times, where you have um, 
customers that have the need of having a, a phone in a large warehouse or a very large building that's, uh, you know, a quarter of a mile from one end to the next. And they, they need phones in multiple places, but they may not have why, um, Ethernet lines or courts in places where they want the phones, like in a hallway. This is where this really comes into play. You just connect into the router and you can do everything you do with one connected into a regular Ethernet port. Um, so uh, we also have, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, supports the expansion uh, module, which is the new PM200. It plugs into the side. I'll show that more clearly. And we now are getting into the point where we have the two USB ports for headsets and future expansion. And uh, that's one of them here for the expansion module. And then you have another one on the back for regular use. Okay, this is our high-end executive P370 phone. Now I have another chart, I think right after it, the show is comparing all of these current P phones to our existing phones and some competitor phones, I believe. Um, but when we get into this phone, now you get in another whole level. And oh, by the way, this is the uh, replacement to the D80 phone. The current D80 we have is a touch screen like this one. Uh, but of course this phone is a lot newer electronics and it's um, the latest uh, capabilities of any of these phones. This has a seven inch color um, backlit screen and it's touch screen. And it also is the IPS glass. It's really important on this phone because you can be in a, a very sharp angle and still be able to read what's on the screen. You can't do that with a lot of phones. Like I say, there's a few out there that has it, but uh, not many. This one also has 16 SIP accounts. You notice there's no hard buttons, uh, but it does have 16 SIP accounts, which is similar to buttons. Um, all of this is glass on the front. Hopefully you can see my mouse. Now at the bottom, we have buttons at the bottom, but these actually are touch buttons also. Uh, so these, this, these buttons are etched into the glass at the bottom. So this whole area is larger actually than on the D80. And of course you can press these buttons and go to the various features and functionalities on the phone. And it has the two USB ports, uh, has everything else that all the other phones have. Okay. So this is the one I wanted to get to, and instead of um, you just taking it for granted that, uh, hey, that we got these stuff on the back. This is very similar to the back of, of all of the uh, low-end and the mid-range phones, not necessarily the back of the, the P370 executive phone, but it has the same features. Uh, you notice that you have, first of all, because uh, I've talked about it multiple times, you have two USB ports. This is the little indention here where if this angle was shooting from the side, you'll see that's a USB port. And then on the very back here, you have another USB port. Both of them are fully functional USB um, ports. So you can connect in to a headset. If you, if you don't have a, a um, expansion module with the keys, you can actually put, plug your headset into the side of this instead of going to the back, whichever you desire. Uh, at the top, you have two slots. It makes it a lot easier to plug in. Uh, the top slot gives you a lower angle of the phone on the desk. This one gives you a higher angle at about a 45 degree. And it makes it a lot easier. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, and I don't think I show any image with, well, you can kind of see it there on a little bit. There, that one's a little better. On this one, you see the, the desk stand. I do want to point out, this was actually a big engineering area. We had heard uh, various things on both um, competitive phones and on our existing phones about the desk stand and the rubber feet on them and how uh, pliable that was and how well did it work. Uh, on some phones, if you don't have really good rubber feet that helps grip the desk, uh, and some of you probably experienced it, when you're pressing these buttons, particular buttons toward the top, you go to pressing the buttons, your phone kind of dances across your desk. The interesting thing is these don't do that. Uh, we actually redesigned this completely. We re redesigned so the feet are larger, the rubber is thicker, and oh, by the way, you can actually snap that off and snap it back on. It's not like other phones where it's just glued on. When it comes off, it comes off. Now what do you do? Well, hopefully you find the foot and you can glue it back on. 
<clears throat> so that makes the the death stand uh, even better than what we've seen on any other phone. And I can say that, uh, you know, faithfully that uh, it does work really good. Uh, so back to the back of the phone. Then we have all the other ports on the back, uh, you know, for your, your EHS, your Ethernet port and PC port, uh, DC power, et cetera. One note about the lock ports. I mentioned that earlier. Again, these are Kensington lock ports. You notice there's one here, I'm circling, and one down here. So you might ask, and, and, and what this is, you can actually plug in um, a lock that in the strap that wraps around, and you can lock it to something else near the phone so that somebody doesn't just grab the phone and walk off with it. Well, we have two, because if you have it mounted on the wall with the wall mount, which would go in these slots here, you can't get to this one. So we still have one you can get to. Um, I'm gonna be honest to my surprise, I've heard a lot of good things about that and, and they think it's very important. So let's get to this chart. Uh, I've covered all the, a lot of the features on every one of the phones, but this, you see them all. And, and essentially I can say, here's the full P-series family. And you'll, I'm not gonna go in detail because I've covered most of it, but you'll notice that uh, here's our VAE uh, 310, 315. Uh, some of the differences between the phones going up is this is the 2.4 um, uh, color screen. It has two line keys and um, we have both fast and gigabit speed capabilities. And then you have the lower end, the P320. This is where we start the 4.3 IPS color screen. And that continues right on up to here and also with the new PM200 expansion model. It's really the same. Uh, glass, I'll call it, but it's turned 90 degrees. And you'll, you probably saw that in the uh, other image. So we go from four line keys to six line keys with paging, which really gives you, you know, six times 10. Um, and uh, so it, it's a lot more pages. And then you have the 330 that has 12 line keys and paging, and then the 370 that's got the 16 soft keys. Um, and then you notice that all of these have gigabit speed, uh, then you get over to 330, we have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and the same for the 370 um, to the side of it. And both of these have the two USB ports, one of them to be used for an expansion module, if you have it, or can be used for anything you want. You notice down here it says expansion module. I know it's a little busy, but it's worth pointing out a few things. This is an interesting chart. Uh, if you are familiar with a lot of our uh, existing products and of course as you know now the A series is EOL but if you have them or have used them it gives you a better idea of where does these new phones fit in and uh, you have the 310 similar to a S206 or an A20, 315 is 305 and A22, 320 is in the range of a D60, D62 uh, and 406 Mid-range is uh, really the 505. Uh, the 65 actually starts fitting. It's like the D65 is kind of in between these I mentioned earlier. Um, this has six keys, 65 has six keys. And then you get into the 330, that's 12 keys, and you're definitely in that range. And then of course 370 and, and the D80 are the, uh, the 370 is a replacement to the D80. And over an expansion, the current expansion is, um, the module will be coming out with in just a few months is a PM200, and it's very similar to the, the existing XP150 and 100. So there's a lot of comparisons there between these phones. Let's talk a little bit of, of more in, in some details about this is platform focus. And what I wanna mention is that uh, the focus up to recent is that the Sangon has been focused on getting early adopters uh, and features and functionalities with the free PBX, PBXact, that's a big focus, and also the SwitchFox environments, which, you know, if, if you're in this world, you know that SwitchFox is actually built on top of these platforms also. Uh, the business voice that I mentioned earlier uh, is coming. Uh, we're talking about the Q3 timeframe, and uh, that will have additional features, but they will probably be different features and requirements than what we might even see in our traditional uh, provisioning systems and that's based off of the basically the kind tail uh, the enterprise-wide needs etc so um, 
what I would like to do now is talk about some, uh, get a little bit more specific on some features and functionalities um, on the new phones. So as we know, as a, as a phone user, if you're an admin and uh, you're trying to set up the phones, et cetera, we know that setting up uh, these business type phones and provisioning them uh, can be a little challenging. Uh, in a pure cloud environment where, you know, basically we host that and set it up for you, it's not a big an issue. But if you own prem and you own your own phones, and a lot of people do, then that's where you get a little bit more challenging. And so there are a lot of things you got to think about. You know, you have to think about um, things like um, what types of phones do you have. It could be some different manufacturers and models and, you know, firmwares could be different. Um, so you really got to pick the right phone uh, for your provisioning system and provisioning servers. You need to figure out exactly what type of um, handshaking uh, you want to have to your server. You know, is it FTP, HTTP, et cetera? And, and essentially, a lot of things you have to consider. However, we make that a lot simpler. You know, how do we solve the provisioning challenges and concerns? First of all, you can power on the phone. And these are some example screens where you power on the phone. You actually own your phone. You notice it says from the phone. Choose the extension you want. And then you can give yourself a high five. Or in other words, you're done. This last image shows that you're now done, you're booted up, you know, so up here we selected phone extension 104, and now we're phone extension 104. It's really that simple. And so to talk about a few other highly integrated features and functionalities, we have a lot of other capabilities. Some of them is like presence, uh, you know, or, or, and your status. So we can show, you know, a lot of uh, phones out there, and it's pretty common to have, you know, showing that you're on a call, you're ringing, or your or idol. So I'm looking at somebody else's line and, and I'm so, oh, see, okay, so I was gonna call them, but they're on the phone right now. We go further than that. We actually have customizable status messages. For example, you could actually go a bit more detail and say, I'm in a meeting, whoops. And I just blew out of that meeting. Yeah, just kidding. So you can actually go and say, <clears throat> hey, I'm in a meeting. Uh, I'm actually available, but at home, uh, I'm not available and I'm on vacation, et cetera. So you can customize that. And that's the big powerful thing, particularly with the remote um, working of a lot of people nowadays. And this presence can be synchronized across all of your, your UC clients. So, and when I say clients, we're talking about, you know, hard desk phones or PC soft phones, web tools, mobile apps, et cetera. So it's pretty unified across and you can really define your presence uh, any way you want it. A few more is uh, integrated features is that, um, for example, we have content sensitive phone books. In other words, you can have all your contacts and I just look at the, the screen image. And by the way, all of these are actual screen images, just in case. Um, and you show a lot of your contacts and we provide the initial information. This may be all you want and usually 90%, 95% of the time it is all you want. But let's say it's a new contact. You just added a week or two ago, maybe a new customer. And you go, okay, I can't remember really who this guy is. I know he's, so let me just click on it. So you go and look at details. And now I can see that, uh, oh, by the way, that guy's available. Uh, and he's with Wayne Enterprises. And you can actually have more information. You can have that uh, he's the VP of the company, et cetera, et cetera. And then off to the side, what can he do? Well, I can dial him. I can actually leave him a voicemail. I can actually monitor him. And if he's inside the company, I can, you know, an internal um, employee, I can actually intercom him. So a lot of things you can do. A few more features like productivity apps, visual voicemail. Uh, I won't go into detail. Everybody pretty much knows that. So you bring it up and you can see that there was a calls left by, uh, you know, three people or five people. And you can go select that one and then you play it. And uh, you can actually get details about that caller, kind of like we did just previously. I can select details and I can go, oh, that's right. Uh, I got this call back from him a while back and it, here's the extension, et cetera. And we have a timeline, uh, not shown here. It, it, you know, you can be halfway through it and you go, I wanna listen to that again. You can actually do a rewind and a fast forward. 
and, and when that starts playing, right here it has not started playing. When it starts playing, you'll see a rewind and a fast forward, which is another handy capability. You have voicemail screening, where you can screen the particular uh, calls, and you also do call queuing, where you can essentially set up a, a queue that actually will point to a different uh, extension if you need to that capability. A few more. I'm probably putting some asleep, so I'm gonna go through this a little quicker. Um, we have productivity apps like on-demand, server-side phone-initiated call recordings. In other words, you store the call recordings on your server so you can re record about as many as you want or how capable your server is. And this just so sh shows some examples here of that. Um, we also have one-touch server-side call parking and parking lot. And this shows that um, um, you have a caller came in and you parked him. And if you're not sure what call parking is, uh, just think about if you're putting somebody on hold, a caller comes in, put them on hold. Well, that caller's on hold, and only you can go back to that caller and, and pick him up and start talking to that person. Call, parking lot, you actually put them in, it's like put them in hold, but you put them in a, sometimes I call it a bullpen. It's in a parking lot with a bunch of other calls that have been put in there. And if in your company, you have different, people that are members of that parking lot, they can go pick up that call and complete it. Let's say it's, you're in a big bullpen and taking a lot of calls from customers. Anybody can go answer that call. That's what a parking lot is for. And that's what these screen images show. Uh, we have a few other things that are uh, also available like pen-based hot desking. I can be in my office, I'm on my phone. Uh, I'm on an example, my extension is 100. I decide I'm gonna to go to our office down in Tampa or somewhere, and I want people to be able to see that my extension is still 100. I log out here, travel down to Tampa, happen to have a phone there I can get to in Tampa. Again, it's on the, uh, the same uh, provisioning system. And I can log back in, and now I am still extension 100. That's what hot desking is. You move from one desk to another. Uh, and still be seen as the same extension. We also have server stored call logs and conference call management. This is the, <clears throat> the big step above just freeway calling where you can have, you know, somebody calls me, now there's two on the line. And then we decide we need to get Tom on the phone. So I call him, now we got three. That's the three-way call. Conference call goes beyond that. It's real conference call management. You can have, you know, six, 10, 15, and you have a host and you manage the calls like you would a conference call. So here, uh, you know, are all phones, business applications stored on in all UC environments? Uh, actually, no. Uh, the point here is that the features and functionalities that are in each one of these uh, these provisioning systems, whether it's free PP exact, uh, or SwitchFox, or business, they can be slightly different, and and they do have slightly different architectures. Now, these three. PB exact, uh, free PBX and SwitchFox are very similar because they're all kind of built and stacked on top of each other. Business Voice is a new one, but it's uh, enterprise level. And so I'm not gonna go through this in great detail, but my point is you will probably see different features and functionalities from one provisioning system to the other. Very few with these three, but you will probably see different features and functionalities that are wanted in the business force world that you may not see or is not desired in these other ones. Uh, and I, for example, um, I'm gonna skip on down here, PB Exact utilizes a different queuing engine than SwitchFox. Therefore, you're gonna see a little different uh, reaction. And um, so in, in reality, the SwitchFox queues app may or may not be available in the free PBX or PB Exact. Another example is um, the PB Exact utilizes a different voicemail application. So you may or may not get a, a few different uh, capabilities there. So just kind of want to point that out, that you're not going to get exactly the same thing on everything. But again, the asterisk based products, they are very close. Let's talk about where we are today with the firmware story. Uh, we released these phones, uh, the mid-range phones on 411. And at that time, we released them with firmware 423, which uh, was also available within the EPM um, the, the manager uh, for both free PBX and PBX Act, uh, and you guys that are 
in that world, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So if, if it was available with the Switchbox 7, 9, and those products to upgrade. Uh, the latest firmware that is shipping today um, is 432, and it's, it provides a full set of features and functionalities, including uh, active Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and hot desk. Uh, those features were not yet available. They were just a week or two behind in uh, this particular version. Uh, now, with that being said, at the bottom, I say that we always strongly recommend to upgrade to the latest available firmware before you use the phone. And we also continue to provide firmware updates monthly. Sometimes we do it sooner than a month, but we're working on actually multiple versions now. Uh, let's look at a little few details here. Um, as far as the launch, uh, these, all of these phones except the P370, which is coming soon. We're just a few weeks off on that particular phone. Uh, they're all available at Port Supply now. Uh, you can order any of those except for this particular phone. Um, and in fact, that'll be probably just a few weeks. And um, one thing we did earlier, this is just kind of a FYI. Uh, we did something unusual and different. We actually started shipping uh, the P phones early to distributors in March. It was late March, but in March, so that we made sure we had thousands of these phones available and in inventory. And there were, we had thousands available of these particular phones. And, um, which is unusual as a product manager. I'm always racing to make sure we have product in inventory before we can launch. We didn't have that problem this time. Um, so a couple of notes down that the 370 is coming soon and the PM expansion module, as I mentioned, is a few months out. A few logistics issues. Uh, what comes in the box? Well, obviously they come in a brown cardboard, what we call a gift box. Inside that box, we're talking about the one telephone unit, handset and coil, ethernet cable, and a telephone desk stand. Uh, now, we do not include the AC power supply. I'll make a note here. Um, all of these phones, by the way, are power O ethernet QA, uh, and that's all of these phones. Um, but we do make the power supplies available uh, for purchase, and we don't ship them with them because the majority of them, uh, probably what I'm hearing nowadays is, you know, 80 to 90% of the power supplies would be wasted anyhow, because a lot of people use the PoE. There are a few that use them nowadays, and that's, that's continuing to, to uh, trend that way. At, at some point, you may not have very many that use uh, AC power supplies. Just a real quick chart that shows all of the uh, P phones and all of the accessories, um, and it shows the SKU numbers, and then the MSRP pricing up to the right. A few more accessory issues uh, or information, I mean, is that the power supplies, speaking of them, with the P phones is a 12 volt power supply. And no, it is not compatible with the DRS phones, uh, which they had five volts. So you have to use this. Now, you may ask, why do we do that? Well, because as you get further into uh, bigger um, visual display color screen, as you get into other optional uh, accessory ports like the USBs and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and et cetera, uh, and at some point you continue to be able to use other devices with USB, for example, and you can use it for charging your cell phone. Uh, now, most people use it on their laptop or something else, but you can. Anyhow, you get more power demand and the decision was made to go ahead and go with the 12 volts so we can supply that power uh, going down the road. The desk stand, I need to note that uh, now these phones do come with a desk stand for that particular phone, but you can buy an optional one uh, or a, uh, a spare if you want to. And there are two different ones. 310, 315, 370 have one size. It's slightly smaller. And then the other phones have a different one, and it's slightly larger. We also include a wall mount for additional purchase if and when you need one. We also provide spare parts for like handsets and uh, cord cords to go to the phone, um, little small retainer clips. This is a big item, actually. I see this all the time. It's a little small clip where you hang the handset up, and that little clip holds the handset if it's mounted on the wall. If that breaks or disappears or something, how do you keep the handset on? So we do provide those. Uh, 
this is just a quick slide about zero touch provisioning. Uh, there may be some in the audience that's uh, not familiar with this, but uh, in, in a nutshell, this makes provisioning and setting the tone much easier. <clears throat> Essentially, if you're going through a particular reseller, uh, they actually go through and set up and, and, uh, and establish your MAC address for your phone. And so when you out plug your phones in, uh, just as it says down here, you know, you, you unbox it, you plug in the network, and the phone automatically receives its initial provisioning configuration. Because there's been some pre-setup, number one, by your reseller, which is a very good thing, and these phones are able to recognize um, and find their MAC addresses and find out what type of setup they have already set up. Zero touch provisioning makes it uh, great. So this is an area where, let's talk a little bit about legacy phones. Um, and what I'm going through here, Barry, if you don't mind, I might ask uh, you to say a couple of points here in just a second. First of all, as I mentioned, all the A phones were EOL'd in the uh, end of December. So really January 1, we had uh, quit, uh, we certainly quit making them and, and quit shipping. We had a few, but we were almost out of them. Um, now, we had planned for this day to where all of the A's and D's and S's all the features and functionality would roll and merge up into the P phone, into a phone that will do it all. But that's really where we are, including that they, these P phones will work with all of our provisioning systems. These other phones would not do all of the provisioning systems. But we still have some of these, um, and we are still transitioning, and we don't really see these phones uh, um, uh, moving out of the picture until we get to, into uh, late June, July timeframe, some somewhere in there. I mean, again, we still have inventories of these phones. So um, one thing I want to mention is that, uh, let's talk about support and warranties. That is not changing with the phone. We still have the same uh, tried, uh, honored uh, uh, support and warranty replacement uh, policies. Um, and in fact, uh, just to give you a little bit of assurance on that, today, Sangoma, and I'm saying today, still provides bug fixes to our older D phone models. If some of you remember, it was D40, D45, D50, D70. That was models before the D60, 62, 65 that are shipping even today. Uh, and, and they actually were discontinued five years ago. We still support them. So, Nothing changed here. Mary, I don't know if you want to mention anything about uh, um, trial phones or test phones or something. I just mentioned about the D phones and S phones. Absolutely. So, yeah, we, we can certainly supply partners with NFR units. Um, you know, if, if you really um, are interested, which we hope you are, in, in these awesome new new phones, um, you know, reach out to your account manager or you can reach out to me and I will get you in touch with that person and we can get you some units so you can get it into your testing environment, play around with them. But yeah, I just want to reiterate the attention to detail, even those little, little things that you guys are showing with the dust stand, um, giving it some traction and um, the accessory pieces and stuff. We, we get questions for those all the time, like you said. So it's really great that you guys um, kind of paid attention to those little fine details that are offering those as solutions to these, these new phones. But yeah, reach out to us if you want to um, check them out. We can offer you some deeper discounts um, as an NFR unit. And, and Tom, if you don't mind, I just was thinking about the yep. D series and S series phones. You, you want to add a couple of comments about the inventories we still have on those phones and where we're headed with them? Yeah, I sure do. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we have uh, the fast movers, of course, in the D-Series, uh, the D65 principally. We have lots of inventory of that as, as Void Supply does as well. And the S-Series, uh, looking at the, the two flagship products there, the 505 and the 705, very strong inventories. And we have a special promotion going on right now till the end of June. So this is an opportunity for those folks who are deploying S-Series phones with free PBX or PB Exact. Uh, take advantage of it. Uh, you might want to purchase extra phones right now, but there's a great opportunity with the promotion and the fact that we have inventories available uh, and we'll continue to do so certainly through the end of June. So yeah, good stuff. All right. Th thanks, Tom. I, I, I remember us talking the other day that, uh, 
you guys are still heavy into the D and S phone. So I want to make sure you, you could uh, express where we are with that. Okay. Uh, so let's go. We're almost done, folks. Um, let's talk about the final takeaways. I always like to put a slide. So it really says, okay, Dorothy, where have we been and where are we? What does this mean to us? Uh, first and foremost, we, we have been working for a long time in merging all of our current phones um, with into new, improved, better technology phones and all the features and functionalities. And we've managed to do that. Um, we, we have, uh, they, you know, the, the S phones and the D phones and the A phones, they had few differences between them. But now we've got all that into one phone with the very latest technology. They have more memory, actually. You won't never see it, but they have more memory. The processes are faster. So we're now <clears throat> into the latest stuff. Um, all the phone, the new P phones have gigabit speed with the exception of the value-based 310. And we did that on purpose so that we can let you uh, either purchase them or provide them uh, at, a, at a better rate. Um, they all have the high, quality color displays, the in-plane switching I mentioned earlier, which is any angle viewing. Um, we call it better future-proofing, meaning that we have USB ports on majority of them. Now you show the list here. Uh, that allows you to plug in to different devices as we continue to go down the road and add more devices that they'll be compatible with. Um, better headset options. You have Bluetooth headset options, or you have USB headset options. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we have USB headsets that plug directly into the phone or into your PC. Um, wireless connectivity, uh, we have more line keys than we have on other phones. Uh, we know the P320 has four, 325 is six with paging, which makes it actually more keys. Uh, 330 with 12, which makes it, and again, that's you know 10 pages um, per key, so just do the math. Um, and then we have the P370. Um, and of course, the 330 and 370 will both accept the attendant console or the additional keypad. Real big key is all of these phones support all of our provisioning systems. And as I mentioned, BV will be later this year. Uh, the common uh, 12 volt power supply fit, whoops, went one too big, uh, fits all of these phones. It also fits the, the uh, expansion module uh, that I had mentioned. Uh, the first expansion module, and by the way, you can do six of those uh, in sequence. The first one will accept its power from the phone itself, so you don't have to do anything. But then you get beyond that, then you they will need their own power supply, just a little tidbit there. Um, and um, one of the key things of supporting the S and D phones, um, and really the D phones uh, is probably a little bit more in this, is that it makes upgrades a lot easier because the, the D phones, they work and design, a lot of features work just ex exactly the same way that the D does and most of the S. So there's really, it's much easier upgrades, it, it's easier uh, to set up and, and really no training involved. Um, I think that's about it at this point, Mary, uh, Tom, and I, were there any questions that you're aware of? I don't see any questions, but we can open that up if you'd like to ask uh, Stan or Tom or myself any questions. Like you, like I said, you can use that Q&A box um, or that chat box at the side, right-hand side of your screen. Um, and, and Mary, if they would like to send some to you later and, and you can push them on to me, I'll be glad to try to answer them that way too. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll definitely share the slides and the presentation with you um, in the and probably the slides right away and then the recording will be available in the next couple of days. Um, and I know we, we talked about the phones and there is an instant rebate promotion that is running on the S series phones. Um, so if you wanna take advantage of that, those are available. We have inventory. And while you're placing those orders, if you wanna test out one of the new P series phones, you can add that on as an NFR unit. So those are all the options that are available. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I know we we uh, are doing a giveaway too, so um, I am going to draw the name uh, after we get off here, and then I will let you guys know who the lucky winner is uh, for the P330 phone.
Okay, Mary, I, I guess I'm done. I really appreciate the opportunity to share this information and looking forward to any questions or any way I can help at this point. Tom, I, I appreciate it too. Yeah, thank you, uh, Stan. That was well done. Beautiful. Yeah, thank great. Thank you, everybody, and we will be in touch. Thanks a lot, folks. Thank you Bye. very much.